Welcome to the first in what I hope to be a series of the Paddleist Complete Guide to a particular river. And in this case, the Paddleist Complete Guide to the Sabumic. I love the Sabumic. I think it's great for many different people. I think the uh, more experienced paddlers like it because of the drops, which are pretty fun and exciting. But the uh, maybe the less experienced paddlers love it because of the pools, because at the bottom of the drops is great recovery areas, um, big eddies, and it makes it just as fun, super safe place to paddle. So um, let's talk a little bit about the Sabumic. It's gorgeous up there, and one of the first things is uh, actually getting there. Um, since I'm usually around the Penobscot corridor area, I usually go up the Golden Road and head up through Caribou Checkpoint um, up to Cebu McDam and uh, then down to the Put-In. I would say you can also come across through um, through the Moosehead area, and you can check out that map. I would say either way, be sure to carry a compressor and some tire plug kits. Last time I was up there, I had had pretty bad tires actually on my Honda Element and wound up with several flats. Luckily, I had my patch kit and my compressor, and I just fixed them up. Um, but on the way back, found a car with... Uh, Evidently didn't have a plug kit and a compressor because the tires were off, <laughs> probably meaning they had taken them off to drive back to town, got a ride somehow and get them plugged, uh, get them plugged and put back. So carry that compressor as best you can. The other thing, too, is if you're at Caribou Checkpoint, um, you're going to have to pay a little bit to get in there. So be aware of that um, as you go up in. You know, it's $11 for uh, main residents and it's $16 for non-residents. So. Um, so some places to stay, you can certainly stay right at the Roll Dam, kind of where you take out. Um, it's a beautiful spot, actually, right by the rapid. It just seems like I have never been there without bugs. Um, they are, the black flies tend to be pretty aggressive, you know, um, pretty much all spring, all summer, and in the fall. So that's one thing to be aware of. A little bit further upstream, kind of right where, just by the dam, um, some great sites up there as well. They tend to be a little bit more exposed in the wind, so they uh, um, beautiful views too, but not as many bugs. Most people put in at the, at the culvert, about a mile downstream from the dam, a few hundred yards up there is a double drop, um, kind of nice little kind of play spot if you get around three grand, um, beautiful glassy waves. So the American Whitewater uh, lists all the rapids and just kind of letters them. And of course, there's a bunch of different names. You get a bunch of funky raft guides up there and they make up names. And so these are the names that I've heard or, or made up over the years. And so I'll try to link them together with the American Whitewater site in case you wanted to check those out as well. So if it's really about a three quarters of a mile flat water paddle from the culvert there you put in and they finally reach the first rapid. Um, I just call it entrance rapid. It's kind of got three little drops to it. Um, the American Whitewater Whitewater calls it A, B, and C ledge, um, and I think it can, makes sort of an S turn over about 300 yards. So at the top of the first little drop, nice glassy wave on the river left side, um, pretty fun to surf. When you get a little bit higher, like 1,500, you know, there's a, you can surf some little bit of holes on the right, but pretty straightforward as you go through. Um, just below um, the obviously the the a drop is b drop or the second little drop of it and uh, it's actually a pretty good hole pretty fun to punch pretty beefy guiding uh, ducky trips there certainly seen people sort of drop into that a little sideways and not with a little momentum get surfed and flip out of that but pretty safe there's big recovery eddies on both sides right after that so pretty fun rapid and then a little sort of you know bends back around to the right and you can run that sea ledge that third drop of it you know, pretty far to the right hand side side second drop on the river is triple drop i find that you know the first drop is a river wide hole it's it's almost kind of like a pour over although i never see it really where i'd be concerned to be dangerous but it can be a little bit sticky and i've certainly seen canoes go into that little sideways and flip um not really that retentive that i've experienced but i played in there with a kayak a little bit and it certainly is pretty sticky the left, if you want to really drive hard left, you can sort of punch over and, and avoid the hole a little bit. And that's a uh, you know, pretty, good, uh, pretty good angle. The second drop, um, American Whitewater calls it E-Ledge. Uh, I've also called it meat, I've also heard it called meat cleaver. 
um, on that left hand side is a kind of a sharp rock that sticks right in the middle of it. Um, I've run that pretty much all the way across. Um, it's tricky, I think, in the other drops. Uh, in, the, in the middle, it can be pretty shallow, and the far right, it's going to push you into a ledge. So I usually try to run it really close to the left hand side at low water, and if there's a little bit more water, you can sort of drop right over that rock at the meat cleaver spot. Um, the good part about that left hand side over there, again, is another huge eddy there. It makes a good recovery. Um, and you can porge around it, certainly looking at the green paint on the rock on the left-hand side, certainly many people have. And then you get to the third drop of Triple Drop. Um, the American Whitewater calls it F-Ledge. And again, pretty straightforward, just sort of ledge drop, kind of punch right through it. Um, a little, there's kind of a hole there, not a big one, but certainly if you get into it sideways or get a little upended, you can certainly wind up upside down there. The next rapid, American Whitewater calls G-Ledge, which I think is just kind of a boring name. Um, not like Particle Accelerator, which I think is a much more exciting name. And I think it's such an awesome spot. It's, uh, it's a pretty cool drop, and it, uh, the river sort of narrows up and, and goes to the, kind of the main line is to the right. And you and on to the left is a little rock island. And you just kind of run that, you know, run the drop. Um, but the island's a great spot. You can sort of eddy out there and climb up and, and uh, cheer or mock other paddlers as they go through. Um, usually some flowers there on that island. It's just sort of a beautiful spot. Uh, the next rapid, um, again, pretty innocuous, although it's super shallow. Um, I'm not even really sure what it's called. Uh, I guess it'd be H ledge. Um, I'd say just be careful in there. It's, it's shallow. And After that, you get into I ledge, and many people call this a labyrinth, and the, the water just so seems to go everywhere, all these different routes through there. For the most part, I just find myself going to the far left, um, which many people call move maker. Um, so you'll bend to the left and then, you know, a couple small holes and then take the main chute down through that. Um, it's a great play spot. Uh, you know, Julie has uh, surfed a canoe in there many times. You know, we're getting in there with kayaks and, and we're in a pretty fun spot. Below Move Maker, two smaller drops there. Um, you know, pretty straightforward, nothing, nothing major. You know, this kind of a sticky hole. Um, not a big one at all, but, you know, sort of being in the kayak, you're like, oh, geez, I have to actually work to get out of that. Um, but then the river pushes to the right and then drops down into probably one of the bigger holes. Um, I'm not really sure what it's called uh, other than J Ledge from the American Whitewater. But it's a pretty big hole, so certainly worth scouting. Then you get to Roll Dam. Um, roll dam can be a little tricky um, because it's kind of pour over. Uh, I remember one time dubbing around there on the right hand side and uh, found myself upside down and stuck, and, I, and so I ended up swimming out of my boat. Um, but it was shallow enough that you could just sort of wade over to the boat and grab it and pull it out. Um, not so shallow that it was hitting my head, but certainly not overly deep and over powerful. Um, at higher water, you can run pretty far left. Um, there's a seems to be a, a, a clean chute over there, although it certainly can be, you know, certainly got some, some holes there that can wind you upside down. So that is uh, the thorough paddler's guide to Subumic. I uh, hope it's been helpful for you. If it has, certainly hit that like button. Consider subscribing. If you have any suggestions on what you'd like to see in any future videos like this, please let me know. Always open to some, some helpful hints from you guys. Um, and I hope to run into you guys somewhere up there paddling on the river. Thanks for checking in. Talk to you later.